Hey there, and welcome to another episode of We Read It One Night, the podcast where two chaotic sisters talk about romance novels. In this episode, we're reeled in by hook, line, and sinker by Tessa Bailey. Y'all have been asking and asking and asking for this book, and I'm so sorry it's taken so long, but it's here. It's, well, it's not queer, but it did bring us cheer. If you'd like to return the favor, drop us a rating and review and check out our Etsy shop. Enjoy the show. I took off my nails right Aww. before this. Did you do the acetone way? Um, yes. And it was so much more difficult than the last time I had to remove. So listener, I we got Did you file them first? Tips. Yes, I did. Let me let me let me take you through the You whole should just process. be able to pop them off, honestly. So we got tips with our grandmother. It's like the, three pro- weeks the reason ago it's now. hard to get on is that it's dips. It's a dip. It's like the it's way that dip. they're doing the nail polish. It's not the yes. fake nails that makes it hard, I feel like. I know. Okay. I, I'm aware of that. We got we got dips. We got like just little tips. And dips with tips. <laughs> dips with tips. Why <laughs> okay. does that sound like a like a shade slightly shady like children's charity you know like mm. cars for kids or like something like that i don't know no so yeah so baba wanted to remove hers but she couldn't get it off even after like dipping it like ugh, literally soaking her hands in nail polish remover with acetone for like an hour and it just wasn't working and then i tried to like start like chipping like chip them off a little bit and like she like started complaining so we got like another thing, nail polish thing that's like supposed to be strong enough for like. Did you Google it? Because I feel like yes. there's something about using heat. Okay. Yes. That's this thing that we got literally looks like. Okay. Wait, wait. So do you know, a small tangent, you know, those, um, the buckets, the popcorn buckets that they had for the dude movie. No, I have no idea what the dude the movie is. The ones that like looked like the dude movie is that one with Timothy Chalamet and it's sand I don't, people. I have, it's like I've a literally never seen a single movie. Actually, I guess I saw Little Women. You haven't seen that on TikTok? Oh, Dune. 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 Oh, yeah, of course, Dune. Yeah, I thought you said I, Dune. Do you, know what, do you know what I'm talking the about dude with the buckets? Movie. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. I do. I told you I was wondering why Dune was coming back into my life. Yes. Anyway, the buckets, um, that's what this nail this nail remover acetone thing looked like it looked like the dune popcorn buckets except the hole was for one finger so that you could soak slash like scrub mm. a little bit like as you were soaking anyway it's a special an... thing for that instead of just a i don't bowl. mom got this i asked mom to just get acetone i asked mom to get at least 70 proof acetone and mom came back with this because it was the mm-hmm. only thing they had at cbs oh and yeah i had i like soaked it and then i had to like chip them off like one by one Mm -hmm. i think i've like gotten the most efficient way to do it so i can do it for baba tomorrow but i think she's gonna be like oh they didn't hers already two of hers have already like chipped off because Mm -hmm. she accidentally like sliced them with a knife oh no they like they shattered like wait so she didn't end up getting it off in time for her no she she cut them Mm -hmm. like with regular nail scissors so that they Mm -hmm. wouldn't be long yeah but no she still has the dip on her yeah the first time i got these i had to do the whole astron scrubby thing the second time i think this is because i just did a bad job they only lasted like a few days and they kind of like like it started like with my hair getting stuck in it when i would like are you sure you got my fingers through my hair yeah, it was the same fucking thing. They were just rushing because we were there close to closing time. Like, it's whatever. But they just kind of, like, pop off, you see? Like, it got lo- – and I, honestly, I think I could probably do this with some of these if I wanted to, but I'm trying to keep them on. Like, I don't know if you've noticed if your hair is starting to get, like, stuck in them. No. When you're, like, washing I it. I noticed or, like... last night that my floss <laughs> got stuck under my hair. Yeah, thumb. exactly. No, some of them were doing it where if I pressed it, it came off um, on the part that's closest yeah. to my cuticle. But those right, – exactly. that's very deceptive. Rachel, no, it's it's don't actually work come off that easily. <laughs> That's how I got them all off the second time. Like one came off accidentally, and then like the other ones, I just kind of like yeah. fucked with. Well, wait, but you filed the tops of them first, right? Yeah, before soaking. Okay, I filed the tops of them. I that I trimmed them so that I wouldn't have to do like the extra long tip. Mm-hmm. I filed them again. I went and I opened a new file pack that I found in the bathroom so I could have a fresh mm-hmm. file, and I filed them again. <laughs> At least I listened to my I listened to a good portion of my audiobook. 
And my nails are also fucked. You, I feel like your whole pitch was that like this doesn't fuck up your nails, and I was it very fucks them up a little bit. It's way less than acrylics. I feel like it it fucked up my nails just as much as acrylics did. If not, never had acrylics. Yes, I did. I got them for prom senior. You said you had this for prom. No, they dips weren't a thing. What? I'm getting so many misleading. First, you were like, you thought you just got gels, which is like normal no, that fucking was, nail polish. That was it. No, <laughs> gels last a little bit longer. No, I gels. How would I you got not know if you'd had acrylics? They like ruin your nails totally. How would you? You like thought you hadn't had it or something. I got because Rachel, it's been 10 years. It's been a decade. I'm sorry. I don't remember my exact prom senior prom experience. I feel like the story's been changing every other day. I had <laughs> acrylics. You can see them in pictures. A senior prom. That was very silly. So today we're doing Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey, which um, was like a listener demand. Like it wasn't even a Mm-mm. suggestion. We received threats. Yeah. <laughs> I received a letter to my home address, like with serious? cutout letters from <laughs> magazines, like threatening <laughs> to kill. Like, I don't know. So no. weird. No, but I've lost count of the number of people that have asked to do that have asked us to do this book. My question for you, this is based on a fun fact we discovered this week. Mm-hmm. Do you think Fox and Hannah, who are our hero and heroine, would visit the Cheese Caves, which apparently you can visit, listener? Why we talked about the that? Cheese Caves. Because I made a note that I wanted to inform our listeners since we've complained about not being able to go to the cheese caves we've talked about the cheese caves you can before. yeah yes we well, can okay. even better news i don't know if they would go but even better news is that you know that <laughs> did you know that raw milk is not illegal to buy in every state like apparently it's sense. not it's not even illegal in pennsylvania it is in new jersey but you just had at least in texas and pennsylvania you have to just like it has to be straight from farm to consumer so you have to like either go to a farm and buy it or like have a co-op buy it, some kind of like weird thing like that. Um, but yeah, what which would it means be otherwise being able to buy it from a store. Oh, okay. I don't know if the I co-op know. thing is legal. I just like saw it as a workaround. <laughs> but that means that we could make our own kaimuk here, which if you don't know, as you probably don't, is like the most delicious um, spread that you have to. Be, but it's like it's basically a raw milk cheese. But so you obviously can't make it without raw milk. And I never thought I'd be a raw milk truther. But like, I don't know, man. Like if it's anything, I don't think I've ever drank raw milk like in itself. But if <laughs> Kaima gets any indication, well, apparently the pasteurization process like ruins a lot of the fat, which like makes a lot of, and like takes about all the flavor, which like makes sense. But like. That makes sense. I don't know. I like that milk tastes like, I mean, I'm a skim milk person girl yes. you, you know this because you just never you'll come around eventually no i don't it's too fatty for me it's the same no, reason i don't like whipped cream like you guys always like whipped cream and stuff like that and i never liked it it was like too much yeah right anyway you i like, like that i like that milk yeah, just tastes like nothing it just takes like a, like a little like a half step above water gross <laughs> like refreshing but it's not water refreshing yeah, with electrolytes you're gonna realize one day i don't think there's any electrolytes <laughs> well anyway. there's more than in water <laughs> <laughs> should have made you come down for the eclipse i am so yeah. glad i've heard from everyone i'm so glad we i made us drive like an hour away because it like literally got sunny just for like just for like an hour like not in, like as in not cloudy it was like cloud cover all here and apparently i talked to like multiple people who saw it in the city and they were like yeah it was like we couldn't see it at all it got like dark, but that's all we could the see. The whole eclipse mom was like, Why isn't it getting dark? Oh my god, like, I know. I was like, Because like, we're not in totality, yeah, I know. Like, there's like a big difference. Di- I know, I know. I don't think he understands that. He fucking texted me. I think me. most people don't really understand that, that yeah, like how big of a difference there is, even at like 89. That's nothing, even 99 percent is. It's like, yeah, yeah it's I know. Like, I'm saying we were at 89. No, I know. Like, even at I know none of you guys, yeah, I know. Why didn't you? You should come. Listener, tell us about your eclipse experience if you're in North America, because the yeah. rest of the world Go has eclipse. <laughs> if you've had <laughs> eclipses since we started this podcast, send us pictures of them wherever you live. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, there was a British family near us. We went to this like family fun park event. In this, oh, yeah, like, I saw. I was like, are you at a picnic? <laughs> yeah, it was a picnic. It was... Uh... <laughs> Honestly, it was probably totally, it was like totally, traffic was like not bad at all. It was totally unnecessary to like pay, but I, I was like, just in case it was like $40 for like, 
uh, Eclipse family fun pack with like four hot dogs and Eclipse glasses. But not all Eclipse glasses are made equal because the ones that they like gave us at this thing were like way worse. I could see way less than the ones that I had bought on Amazon and like Wait, brought with us. You could see less. Yeah, that's, like like it was it was that's, way less. It was darker through it. Like yeah, I could see. Yeah, that's better. No, for I your couldn't eyeballs. see. Well, maybe not. I don't think so. They were both like ISO approved yeah, or whatever. Yeah, but they could be fake. I, I know. But I don't know. Whatever. Like they could be. I'm not blind though. Also, I realized. Yet. I I don't know. Honestly, I I, I thought people were, were dumb because I was like I wasn't remembering what happened last time. I saw it in Nashville last time, 2017. But like honestly, eclipse glasses are are a scam. Like I'm just gonna say it because, like, and I don't understand how anyone would ever go blind because the when it when it's actually totality, for it was we we drove an hour in so it would be four minutes instead of a minute, which I'm really glad we did because it wasn't cloudy. Whatever I thought I thought it would just like give, it was supposed to be cloudy. I thought it would just like give us a better chance of like having some like visibility. But during totality, you can't see it if you're wearing your eclipse glasses, and it's totally it's safe to you you take off your glasses and you look at totality. Like you can look at it with your naked eye before and after totality, as you experience, it's just the same as a sunny day. Like the tiniest sliver of sun is like so much light. And so I don't think anyone, like if you're not, first of all, it's like not as interesting to see. And also it's like, why would anyone stare at the sun? Like if they're not staring at the sun in your normal life, why would you be interested in staring at the sun during well, like a partial eclipse? Speaking of staring at sun in the normal life, um, this like, false health tip has like various people in my life like it just keeps like cropping back up and I keep whacking it back down like a like a mm -mm. whack-a-mole but this time it came in the appearance of Baba of Baba being like you know there are some doctors who recommend that like you stare into the sun for five minutes every morning for like blah 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 health benefits five minutes for like just directly into the sun not five five minutes i glance at the sun for like half a second whenever i go out in the morning because like the whole morning light thing you're supposed to get direct sunlight that's probably not what direct sunlight actually means but i never like <laughs> stare at it no but like i've had multiple different people like over the years been like you what? know i read that if you like we should like stare right yeah, into the don't i'm like no stare into the sun people no and like don't honestly i enjoyed i enjoyed like seeing the partial eclipse through the eclipse glasses but it's like not it's not at all the main event and like I, I would never have looked at it like there's no risk of me looking at it if I didn't have my eclipse glasses and I think most people wouldn't even it wouldn't even occur to them to look at it because they wouldn't even know that there was something to see you know what I mean uh, yeah I was like Baba like you like already have macular degeneration <laughs> like why are you trying to make this work are you trying to go blind faster it is really wild how quickly the story has changed I guess in the Serbian public health yeah, well, because, um, you know, I, I think we talked about this before, like I, the last time I brought this up, probably like a year ago, but the last time that there was a total solar eclipse visible in Serbia, it was in like the 90s. Mm -hmm. And through a combination of, because it was the war, through a combination of a shortage of the um, material that you need to make eclipse classes and like superstition, like all the mm. newspaper stuff, like 99% of the population didn't watch the eclipse and like hid inside. Oh my god! <laughs> and now they've switched to like no, you just stare directly at the sun. Well, that's just Baba. She, like the things that she reads yeah, on her I like know, I know. CD tabloid sites. It's true. So I went to a Twilight trivia. Excellent. How, <laughs> yes. How did that go? I saw that you downloaded um, the Twilight. Twilight honestly, audiobook oh, that was on actually our that app. was actually unrelated, and it was just like I just last night I like I was like I've been trying to get Callie to listen to it, and I finally succeeded. Wait. She's like independently. I was like, she's listening. She, she has read. She has read all the books, but like not. She's not as into it as we. Like she's. I think she, she rewatches the movies way more than. I don't know if she's ever reread the books since. Like, tell her she's not allowed them. to share the same birthday as me if she doesn't read. I don't <laughs> think I've already succeeded. Don't push. Don't push too hard. It, it was a. It was, I had to be tricky. <laughs> I'm, gonna start sending, I'm gonna start sending her threatening no. letters with magazine. That files. will have the opposite of the. That will have the opposite of <laughs> no, the. No, it'll be effects. anonymous. <laughs> That will have the opposite of the desired effects. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, the fucking Twilight trivia. I mean, it was really fun. Don't get me wrong. Like it was, it was like you know, good vibes, whatever. But it was like almost entirely movie based. It was, Ugh. it was movie based. Like one of the fucking Ugh. questions, and the host was like not obviously not that familiar with Twilight. She was a good host, but like whatever. One of the questions was like, what special diet does Bella subscribe to when we meet her? Al albinism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no you know what the fucking answer is vegetarian because apparently 
It's not even in the movie, first of all. Apparently, it's just something that Catherine Hardwick put in, like, a fucking director's guide. Oh, in the Twilight like, Director's her, Guide. I have read that. Her because she's like, oh, a little nod to the to the Edward vampire. Bella's not a fucking vegetarian. She's constantly cooking, like, steak and potatoes and, like, yeah, fish. Yeah, what? That's, like, her whole Charlie. job. I don't think Charlie could afford to feed her if they weren't eating the fish he caught. Like, <laughs> sir. She's constantly <laughs> making, like, chicken. She's, like, throwing up fried chicken. Anyway. Also, wait, but also the just, movie's, like threw that out the window because she eats chicken in breaking dawn no no i know at their honeymoon i know no i know she eats like a fucking hamburger with charlie in the cap she's such a chaos has really started to like fall from grace for me i just like the more she like she was she's like started for you well because i was just like she was just like wacky you know what i mean she was like treating twilight she treated the first twilight movie like it was like this like art house independent film she was making and i I loved that for her like i was like honestly like that's the kind of serious film that we need but now because like everyone's like you know the twilight renaissance and like she's being vindicated a little bit more like Mm. she started to like talk about it more in interviews and so i'll see Mm -hmm. like quotes from her and i'm like no just just, just stop stopped. talking. Just, back just, away. just like, let it. She was like, she yeah. was like, I would cast Jenna Ortega and Jacob Elderai as I Bella that, and Edward yeah. today. I was like, what are you doing? Actually, <laughs> I was like, you know, that's actually not awful, honestly. Like, no. I can see that. No, that makes sense to me. I, I'm still, I'm still against. I honestly, I guess it's not her fault that like trivia hosts twenty years down the line are using her shit as canon. You know, insane. Like well, it's because sure. Stephanie doesn't feed us as well as. Well, it's good. No, I mean that's no. no I don't want to be fed by stuff. Stop saying I, that. Really <laughs> gave me the ick. Don't ever say that again. Um, that's that's something you write <laughs> down on the internet. It's not something you say out loud. <laughs> um. Yeah. Anyway, so the other trivia. So I like honestly didn't know a lot of it because like I have not rewatched the movies as like religious, as religiously as like. There was like a few other things that were just like dumb. They're all on Hulu. Are they? The movies. And I think they're also on Amazon Prime. Somehow nice. they're on both. Nice. I kept nice. getting recommended Twilight. Eclipse was the number one trending movie on Hulu. That on, makes on complete sense. Eclipse. That is really, really silly. Are you serious? <laughs> it was like recommended yeah. and like I it love, had like a big like I, feature like recommended thing. I to me. love people. I was like, good. That <laughs> it is <should> be. wonderful. <laughs> As it should be. You know where there's also no sun? The Pacific Northwest. Specifically, mm. whatever the fuck that town is called in this Borks? book. No, in Hook, Line, and Sinker. I'm making a clever transition oh, back to... Oh, oh, oh. God, what, I don't, what even is a fucking town called? Westport. 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 It's Port a Arthur, real place. It's a, it's a real place. But isn't it not in the right... Just like is Forks. It, is it like in the right location? Yes. Anyway. Okay. And that's where our book takes place between Hannah Mm -hmm. and Vox. They, the whole like first 10% of this book is like emails and like letters and like texts and stuff like between them um, in which we get the information that um, music is Hannah's personality TM in case you didn't, Mm -hmm. in case you didn't recognize that from the first book. Honestly, I really respect and she's like, she's like, yeah. Like, I don't play any instruments, and I can't really sing that well. But, like, yeah, music is my whole personality. And honestly, yeah, why should you have to play an instrument? Like, that was, like, You're it's, right. it's validating in a way. <laughs> You're right, Hannah. And listen, yeah. Hannah has excellent taste in music. Like, she's playing Fleetwood Mac. She's playing Leaving on a Jet Play, and she's playing Fast mm. Car, the Tracy mm. Chapman version, because this book came out before the whatever that country singer version came out. She's playing Stromae. And she's like, my dream man has a record cabinet and somewhere where I can play my records. So jot that down, listener. She's like very low bar. It's a very low bar. The bar is in hell. Why can't she have her own place to play her records? Well, she she (laughs) does. Why does she have to to provide it, Hannah? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, she's looking for her next (laughs) listen. She's been mooching off her stepdad her whole life, but now she's ready to mooch off. She isn't. (laughs) Isn't she 22? Anyway. I don't know. How old is she? Because it's only been like a year. She's like 24 or something. 24. She's That's young. Right. Yeah. She's a baby. And Fox yeah. is like 30. They're ready much of letters. And I like, I really, I like letters and, and texts and stuff and emails. Like I like, I like that in books. Like I like really? when authors include that. Um, I hate having to listen to audiobooks, mm-hmm. read emojis. 
Mm-hmm. I hate having to hear like winking yeah, face I don't, emoji. I honestly, or, I like, don't like. God, I hate it. <laughs> I don't really like the letter thing, like in general, email. Not like, I don't know. It's always like very, no. yeah. Well, what's honestly even worse though is like texts on shows. Like, you know how some oh, shows yes. it pops up? Because yes. then you like have to be looking at movies. it. Yeah, yeah, you like have to be looking at it when it pops up. I don't know. I was trying to rewatch like Jane the Virgin, and there's a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't like that. I like flirting over email specifically because you have to put subject lines. And I feel like it's always (laughs) it's just like for whatever reason, like authors are like very good at like doing the subject line email, like Mm. just like stuff combo. Like it always really works for me. Like red, white and royal blue does it really well. I think Fifty Shades of Gray does it. Why are they emailing? In red, white and royal blue. Yeah, I thought because. There's a rumor that it's social network fan fiction, and that took place in 2004 or whatever. The and they fuck. were email social. Ne- I don't even remember the plot of social the network. social network movie, which is yeah, a yeah, biopic about founding a Facebook. But were they the emailing? fan fiction, no, the fan fiction is specifically they didn't have about. Facebook yet. <laughs> yeah, yes, Casey McQuiston did actually write social network fan fiction, but the fan, mm. the social network fan fiction was like specifically between. I can't believe not, there's social network fan not, fiction. Not Mark Zuckerberg and Eduardo, whatever, but between Andrew Garfield. And Jesse Eisenberg specifically while on the set of The Social Network. Oh, my God. And so there's all these rumors that Red, White, and Royal Blue is like repurposed social network fan fiction. Well, that's what I thought you were going to say with the email thing is that it would happen when like the setup is their like coworkers or something. Because that's the only time. Which, again, you shouldn't you shouldn't be sending those types of emails on your work email. But like, you know, that makes sense. Like you have a yeah. predetermined reason to be emailing each other. It's like Bridget Jones, at least the movie. I don't remember. Yeah. If the or it's that. like, yeah, it's like before. Yeah, you're right. I don't mind it on the Bridget. Well, they're like IMing. They're like I office IMing. Yeah. Which is yeah, like I fine. like I am. You're right. I don't. I didn't hate that. I don't know. I guess or I like I like flavoring a little bit when there's like flavoring of like, um, if like social media is like a big part of the book, like they'll be like like randos. They'll be like tweet. Like it'll be like a tweet thread from a bunch mm. of like people that aren't characters, but just that are like, commenting mm. on like the situation like or whatever. That's very red wing royal blue. It was also in famous. um um the one to watch. Yeah, they have to be like famous enough then though. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I like that as much. It's harder to do. But yeah, they're, they're usually, when they yeah. do it, it's usually But yeah, fine. I just hate emojis. I hate, and like as an audiobook narrator, I just feel like they're like, they die a little bit inside every time they have to narrate an emoji. Are there actual, in like the paper copy of the book, are there I think so. emojis? I think so. Or do they just like say it? No, it, there is an actual emoji. <laughs> What if it's everything? What if it really is just in asterisks or like in brackets? Smiley face. Well, because I'm just trying to imagine like, I don't know, like what version of it? Like, I think it's just a very like the most basic non-copyrighted version. Yeah. Or can be. <laughs> Probably just honestly, I think it's just the one that like Microsoft Word like automatically populates when you type like the like colon parentheses smiley face you know how it'll like automatically oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. turn but it I in i just mean like well yeah but then there's other emojis like i don't know i don't know man i'm like, just been, like eggplant speaking of other things that were funny to me this was just funny this wasn't like painful to my ears the way the emoji thing is the fact that um hannah's boss is russian i forget his name already um sergey sergey uh he's russian and his accent that this audiobook I didn't does Sounds like Count Dracula. Yeah, I didn't realize it was supposed to be Russian. That's very silly. I could not take this man serious. Wait, how do you know he's Russian? I I think they the book specifically says that he's <laughs> Russian. <laughs> that Russian he's like a pretentious Russian film dude. He's <laughs> like, not Russian to date Hannah, that's for sure. Uh, ha, 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 <laughs> except until he gets jealous. Yeah. Because Fox. That was a good pun. Mm-hmm. You know what was also a good pun, but that was a missed opportunity in the what? text thread. What? is like like he makes a joke like fox makes makes a joke about like crabs they make a joke mm-hmm. about crabs but it's like in mm-hmm. the food context like crabs is like the animal on the eating and i right. was just like i really just feel like this was like fox asked where else am i gonna get crabs mm-hmm. and my brain immediately jumped to like an sti joke yeah, and i, I thought feel like it. that was a missed opportunity it wasn't oh, I, it, I think i thought no it i listened not. to it several times to like make sure <laughs> i wasn't no like 
It was a mi- I was like, that was a missed out Tessa. I was like, I expect more from you. I feel like Tessa, like that's in her wheelhouse, like missed opportunity for an STI joke. <laughs> what was the joke or was it just not a joke? It was just about like eating crap, like Fox. They were like, what's your favorite meal or something? And then mm. and Fox was like, oh, I like steak. But then like he has to go out, you know, I don't know. It was something. Mm. It was like within like the fishing context, mm. not the sexual prowess context. Mm-hmm. But why not a double entendre? Yeah. Porque no los dos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Hannah, um, they're working on this a short film. It's not even a feature film, but apparently. Oh, really? Like, I didn't realize. You know, that. it's a short film, which is why it only takes like That's two wild. weeks for them to film it. Oh. But Hannah's like a production assistant and like whatever, and she's trying to be mm-hmm. like a leading lady, which I don't know. I feel like that whole motif felt a little like yeah. hamstring in for me because she works in film. Uh-huh. But um, I'm what I'm just gonna say is that like the only good thing, like really, this this the the essence of that scene for me, um, in which she suggests that they go film the short film in Westport, mm-hmm. um, the essence is really that like the only good thing about capitalism is when you can like scam a free like trip mm-hmm. to visit your sister like by getting mm-hmm. your work to pay for it, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is exactly me. what Hannah does. <laughs> yeah, I do. I just don't I, – I didn't catch that it was a short film. I just don't understand why, why authors – like, because you're right. It's, like, the perfect opportunity if it had been – if, if like, <laughs> it's the perfect opportunity if she had made it, like, a full-length film to have her be staying there longer and, like, not have it all have to happen in two weeks. Like, I feel like why do – like, why do they make it artificially so fun, so short? Like, it could have been, like, the whole summer or something. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because Fox is gone. He's like fishing yeah, for like five days out of those two weeks. I don't weeks. understand. And I would say it's like, oh, because they don't want to have to like write such a long book, but you can always like have time gaps. You can always like skip. So I, I just feel don't... like also like you wouldn't have needed. I feel like she sacrificed like the feature length film, like the she's there for a whole summer or like a whole season element in favor of doing the text and the email like thing because that was the Mm. getting to know each other phase so that we can believe that like in two weeks they're like Mm -hmm. they're already like bffs but i was like Mm -hmm. i feel like you could have done that like okay she has to stay with fox she can still stay with him it would have been weirder for him just for her to stay with him or something it it would be be weird but then you just like you know you create like the tension and the like the hijinks out of like them like Mm -hmm. living together Mm -hmm. yeah you know or maybe Mm -hmm. like the water line burst in brendan's house and so everyone Mm -hmm. has to move in with fox but then brendan and piper get another place to live or Mm -hmm. they live above the bar or whatever because the <laughs> stuff there and like piper owns the bar which wait yeah why doesn't why don't they just live above why doesn't hannah just live above the bar well because it's not very nice right like they never really remodeled yeah it. but i think brendan does kind of like you're telling me that brendan couldn't like spiff that shit up in a year mm. they don't use yeah. it as like a nice little guest house they definitely, maybe they use it as storage for the bar maybe but it had like a kitchen and shit in it so like it was definitely like a living space that's like, true. it was an apartment. Yeah, that's true. I wonder why it was an apartment. Whose apartment was it? Henry anyway. Cross. Look, so why? he can look out onto the sea. Before he got, while well, he was, like, a high school student, and then he get married Before really he gets sucked in <laughs> to the Yikes. watery depths. Yikes. <laughs> so, yeah, they're going to Westport, and they're they're hanging out, and everyone's judging Fox for being a man whore. Yeah, that's like the big conflict for him. I yeah, how like did you feel silly. about this? It's a little silly. I don't know. I think because it's the second time reading it, too. I was like, <laughs> oh, I thought it was silly, silly the first time I read it, too. I know. I thought it was silly. I just don't remember. I think, I don't know. I was like newer. Yeah. So the whole element listener is that he's like, his father is a man whore and everyone this is why I'm conflicted about his his conflict because like everyone growing up is like you're gonna be a heartbreaker like blah 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 they're like sexualizing him basically and like making mm-hmm. his whole identity about like you know being a dater a womanizer mm-hmm. from an early age and so like and then like his high school his college girlfriend was a bitch Very and convoluted. like was two-timing yeah. him and like, he was so he has like traditional romance hero like 
he was scorned in love before so hmm. now he'll never love again or like that was so complicated that's He's like, like so... everyone just looks at me and sees that i'm a womanizer and so i'll never be able to settle down mm-hmm. and i might as well mm-hmm. and like i'm conflicted because like it's silly like it's silly in the way that like anthony bridgerton's mm-hmm. whole like bee phobia is silly mm-hmm. in the book mm-hmm. <laughs> um but which by the way did you see the bridgerton season three trailer came out um no yeah, it came out today. It. I got some text. Oh, today? Yeah, it came out today. Oh. Yeah, so on, like on one hand, like his whole like everybody automatically looks at me and like my mom looks at me and flinches, which I was ready to fight his mom. But it turns out that like it was just because she like is sad that she failed him as a mother or whatever. But like on the other hand, like there there was like a really like sad and heartfelt and emotional element of like him being sexualized as like a young kid and like never, you know, never be like there was like nuggets of like mm-hmm. depth there that made it really because I don't know how you would else you would write it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't I don't know what the other way to write it in which it doesn't have the nugget of silliness as well right yeah you know yeah, like, like how, little, do, how do you take that i have no idea yeah but like You're i right, liked it was... but i was also like anthony bridgerton is like a bee gonna come is his father a bee mm-hmm. is his father barry b benson <laughs> is fox's father <laughs> barry b benson <laughs> is that <laughs> is being revealed yeah. or mr crabs since they're fishermen <laughs> is fox's father mr that crabs? would be a whole nother level of fucked up though that would be a twist he's out there crab <laughs> oh, hunting he's... for a living oh my he's god you're crabs, right leaving them to starve to death in the unfound traps remember you're right it's like how in the little mermaid have you ever thought about the fact so like obviously they stop eating fish once like ariel becomes the the queen mm-hmm. or whatever like they're not sure. gonna do that but like this is a coastal country, like in a coastal town. Like, how much of their local economy do you think relies on fishing, and how right. much of that local economy was destroyed because the prince married a mermaid? Right. <laughs> because they found out that fish are like sentient. <laughs> right. And like our other animal, like our yeah. other right, like there's like horses and shit. Are they also fish eaters? Yeah, and like dogs, like is the whole country humans now vegetarian? Dogs? Well, the dog so, like, can't talk. The dog can't talk because no, no, I know the dog never talks. So why can't well, the dog? Because talk? humans aren't as because mermaids aren't just humans with tails. They have like different powers, I guess. No, but the crab, the crab and the, and the fish and, the, and gull. the seagull. It's weird that the gull can talk, but not the dog. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I just believe though that the mermaids. I, I don't. I'm not too worried about the local economy things. I just feel like the discovery of mermaids and like sentient fish. I don't know. I don't know how, how or why, but like I'm sure Ariel, because yeah, like the mermaids have like a totally different like economy. I'm sure she like brought some other. Yes, but do they? Does everyone else even know about the mermaids? Because in no, but the Little Emma's Mermaid is, too she has like a totally other way. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, why do they? I guess they keep it a secret because the mermaids want to be kept secret. No, they, they keep, keep it a fishing. secret because because Ursula's like skinny sister threatens yeah. the baby's life, and so they don't mm. want her to go to the sea or whatever. Oh, but like, okay. obviously, nobody else knows about mermaids. Otherwise, she definitely would have found out. Mm-hmm. But like, mermaids exist, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But that brings me to the fact that so like frequently we get that like Brendan. In this book, who is Fox's friend and Hannah's future brother-in-law, um, is like the unofficial mayor of Westport or whatever, um, because he's like the captain of the Delray the sea of the ship. Wouldn't be but, a mystery, but why did you have to go? <laughs> Thank you. And that's been what a that song from The Little Mermaid too. Exploring, dip, and daring, Josh's adventures slash explore. Walrus, but oh yeah, mm-hmm. she gets, has like a walrus friend. What's a walrus? And a penguin. <laughs> in these tropical in waters. Why the fuck are they in these tropical waters? <laughs> Why are there penguins? Unclear in South America. <laughs> but my question, my question about about Brennan being the captain is like. Why is this fishing? This village that relies basically entirely on fishing only have one captain. Is it like a why monopoly? Think, wait, why do you think he only has one? We only have one captain because he is the unofficial mayor because he's the captain of the Delaware. Sure? Yes. 
So, like, where are the other captains? Why weren't they considered for mayoral ship? Why is it they're, like, a rotating? Maybe, yeah, maybe it's only small enough for, like, one captain. I'm the captain now. Yeah, because, like, right, didn't his, like, um, wife's, his dead wife's um, Yeah, but then. Pass it down to him? Yes, but also, like, he spends this whole book trying to get Fox to, like, be a captain. When, how did Henry Cross come in? Was Henry Cross a captain? Well, because he's, he's like, explain, so? expanding the fleet. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, because remember in the first book with her sister, Piper, like, yeah. when she goes to see him off, it seems like the whole town's there for, like, this one boat coming back. So maybe yeah. there are only, like, ten families in the town, and they all have, like, dads and husbands that fish on that That are just boat. on this one boat. Yeah. I don't know. How small is this fucking town? I can't tell. It's, yeah. But it's it, it's it's big enough that, like, their bar is fully packed. Well, there, there's only the one opening. bar. There's only one bar. It's big enough to have, like, an apartment, at least two different apartment complexes, right? <laughs> unless, That's unless true. Unless we assume that... Uh, wait, wait, what's face? the second one? Uh, wherever Opal lives, unless we assume that ha- that uh, Fox and Opal live in the same building, which they no, don't I think like... Fox lives above one of the shops. Oh, like you really? know how in our hometown there yeah, are apartments yeah, yeah, yeah. above the shops yeah. on Main Street. I think yeah. that's where Fox. Li- that's what okay. I was picturing that he lives above the okay. shops. Interesting. Yeah, I was picturing. So no, there's only sh- one apartment complex. I feel like he said apartment complex, but I don't maybe know. it's like that town in Alaska where of. everybody lives in the same building. Maybe, but no, it's not because Brendan has a has a house. All right. Well, he's the captain, Rachel. He's the mayor, so mm. obviously he has the, the he has mayoral, the mayoral mansion. the mayoral mansion. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The manor, <laughs> the singular house in town. That's weird. exactly. How does this, hmm. Tessa? I just how does this economy work? Should we go to Westport and like get a breakdown about how their local economy slash social structure works? Like scope out apartments. Yeah. Westport. Did do you think Tessa did that, or did she pull a Stephanie Meyer? She has been there. I don't know whether she went there before or after the first mm-hmm. book came out. I feel like we talked about this, but I don't remember like what we came up with. If anything. I don't know. The sea wouldn't be such a mystery. But why did you have to? Okay. So they arrive. <laughs> Sergey and Fox getting a little dick measuring contest. Um, and like this, the reunion to Hannah Fox is cute or whatever, but I can't help but hyperfixate on the fact that Hannah's bag is allegedly the only black suitcase in this entire like bus load. I just mm-hmm. find that very difficult to believe. I just that was like an unnecessary detail for me. It's, it's supposed to show that she's like alternative TM. and like whatever. Yeah, but like Wait, so she's, she's not by like girly. The only no, that she's like not. Suitcase? That she's like not like super girly. She's down to earth. She, you know, mm. I feel like that's what the intention was. She's the oh. only. She has like a plain suitcase. Like she's oh, not, like, no that. frills type of gal. Mm. I was really, I really hyper fixated on it for, mm. yeah, for quite really, a like, long time. Heels or whatever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Although we do get propaganda later on where Piper gives Hannah like a makeover to go to the party and she's right. like wearing Piper's heels and she's like, these heels are actually like walking on a cloud. Like they're so comfortable because they're like expensive. So like they have padding. Mm-hmm. And I just like. That's not true. Yeah. Show me the Carfax. Like mm-hmm. Tessa. <laughs> like, <laughs> Tessa, why don't you send me these alleged cloud heels? Right. And I'll be the judge of this. Right. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's. I'm sorry. No. Yeah. Hannah's and Hannah's whole thing. Yeah. With like her leading lady bullshit. And she's, I mean, her whole thing is that she's like, I need to work my way up TM. And like, where's the fairness of just like jumping into a producer position using my stepfather's name? But I'm just like, ma'am, I don't know. Like when life gives you privilege, just like use it. Like, why are you? I don't know. Why are you wasting everyone's time? Why are you wasting everyone's time? When like, you know what? Hannah, your father got your biological father got sucked down to the bottom of the Bering Sea. So mm-hmm. you deserve this, actually. <laughs> you deserve just to like, be yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. Or like, why are we stopping there? Like, you got this low level job by using your dad. And like That's eventually, true. right, he could put you into whatever job you want. Like, what's the point of like Yeah. And like your boss knows about it. Like does the her one boss, person does his boss Sergey is like her stepfather's friend? No. Yeah, he's like the no. one person that knows. Yes. Are you sure? I'm I posit- thought it was that positive. her stepfather's like asking around and then asked his like contact to be like discreet about. Mm. Yeah, he asked Sergey to be discreet. No, I don't discreet. think Sergey was the con. I don't know. 
Are you sure? I'm pretty sure he was. I remember that from the first book. I don't know. I feel like Sergey definitely would have been reciprocating Hannah's, Hannah's feelings a lot sooner if he had known. I just feel like even Sergey is not above. I don't know, because he doesn't seem shocked when, like, Piper... You know, at the end, there's, like, the big reveal when they find, like, the the lead actor that Hannah yeah. is, well, like, that's, working yeah, for, he finds like, out. It's just, like, Also, the that's scene. another thing. I don't... The height is, like, really... Because, like, Piper is supposed to be, like, Paris Hilton in the 2000s, you know? Yeah. And I just don't... I guess I have... Uh, Paris Hilton apparently has a sister. I have no idea. You're right that I guess I don't know what she looks like. But I just believe that someone would. Like, you know, like, <laughs> there's no way that, like, Piper would be that recognizable and Hannah would be able to be completely incognito. Yeah. What is you Hannah's know? last name? Well, what does she go by? Because her uh, last name is Bellinger, but they don't Bellinger. know her last name. Yeah, I forget. I forget what they. So what, what does she, she go by? Maybe Cross. Like who knows? Hannah Cross. Maybe. So I hate yeah, how I don't the audiobook narrator said Hannah. That was, was really... a, such a perfect imitation. Yeah, because people. I say really it like felt that. viscerally yeah. like yeah. pulled back and. Just <laughs> <laughs> well yeah, because some people say it like that. It's just like an accent. It's just like very Hannah. Annoying. Hannah. Bella. Yeah. That is just like that's like that's like an inexcusable because no one talks like that in real life. Some people do say like that, say Hannah and like like that in real life, but it's just like I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah, so Hannah, but Hannah with her whole like working up thing, she wants to like learn the ropes, which like I do understand. Like there is like sure. a whatever. But she like gets so she gets all these sea shanties because her dad her henry cross just seems like the, quite possibly the, mayor, the, the most interesting man alive because the not only character in these books yeah he owns like not only was he like the captain slash possibly the, the unofficial captain? mayor um the captain they have a statue the to him because well, he's the last person that died Yes, but like, do you don't think there are other people that died before that? Like, where's their statue, or do they switch them out? You think they, they switch just out the statues every time someone yeah. dies? Maybe. I mean, it seems like it's not that often. It's like once every twenty years. So yeah, there could be like, <laughs> and how long has the town been there? Do you think like maybe like two hundred years? So there's like ten statues Less sprinkled around. Two hundred, which brings years. me back to how big is the fucking town? Because like, yeah, they have to be like taken to the statue. Like they don't originally like. It's see down it. by the docks, right? So like they don't uh, realize it's him. Like they're like, oh, that's a statue. Mm, they like they're not the type to just like unsolicitedly read statue. Plots. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Could it be how me? Weird, bizarre. Yeah. Could it how be bizarre. Me? How, how bizarre. bizarre. How bizarre. How bizarre. For that. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but Henry Cross, he's he's writing songs that apparently are that are still sung in the town because Fox mm-hmm. is like, oh, I recognize this song mm-hmm. when he looks at it later, and apparently mm-hmm. Fox has a beautiful, soulful voice because he <laughs> sings it out loud. <laughs> he owns a bar. He's the captain Plays slash the mayor. He is so cool. Oh, cool. Yeah. He's putting M&Ms on pizza. <laughs> yeah. He's moving to San Francisco. <laughs> He's marrying the princess of Genovia. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually where he went. He didn't die. He just escaped. <laughs> and everyone assumed he drowned. <laughs> He's actually living in Genovia. <laughs> He'll be back when Hannah's of age, which is like 35 in Genovia. Which is so already it's not in, the, in the epilogue. Not in Genovia. It's not relevant not. to Hannah's journey. Her trust isn't. Yeah. Not yet. Hanny, uh, yeah. Hannah is actually the future queen of Genovia. It's just not even in the book, even in the epilogue where she's like 32 because it's being years attacked ago. by a moose. Yeah. Very long life. Yeah. <laughs> long lifespans in Genovia. Very long um, short. Hannah does dress like a princess, though, when she goes to the big cast party. Um, and then yeah. Fox shows up, which is okay. So it's a small enough town. Okay, here's another. But he immediately how big this town is. is. Yeah, he gets home from a trip. He, quote follows the drunk people. Mm-hmm. So this town is small enough that like the drunk mm-hmm. people are easily easily enough like easy enough to locate. Mm-hmm. That Fox can find this party that he didn't mm-hmm. even know was happening. Right, like he just like wanders outside, like she doesn't. Tell yes. him where he's going. He like sees. Cl- I don't know what does he even see. Like a shoe. He's box like I followed the drunk people. Apparently, like, there's a lot of drunk like, people out. rolling yeah. around. I don't know. But does also, like, Hannah is like I booked because Hannah's like the location person or whatever. Like mm-hmm. she did all these arrangements. Mm-hmm. She, she's like I booked this the housing 
far enough outside of town because I knew that it would like get loud. Oh. So like this town is small enough that Fox can find the party, but also big enough that like it has an outside of town that's far enough that away that you can makes... hear it. Well, apparently you can though, because he's following like what how how are they? I don't know. Because like junk? I'm just I'm just thinking yeah. of the guy that like practices drums in his garage, like a block mm. down. Like I could hear him every day. Mm. I can hear the marching band from the high school, like a mm. mile away. Mm. So, like how ha- this house has got to be far away. Well, for and no how are there that here. many houses available for rent? Also, is what's confusing to me. Is it like a summer? Maybe it's like a. It's like I mean, did they say this in the first book? It's like is it like a summer tourist town where like yeah, you know there are tour there are definitely tourists mentioned okay. even in the so book. then okay so then like maybe it, there's like way more accommodations than there are people year round and they're there yeah, they're it's here is what, what time of year is it? It's like spring right or something? I think it's autumn autumn yeah so it's like not quite it's not tourist season so that kind of makes sense yeah i guess yeah i guess but Mm -hmm. fox and hannah kiss at this party to like make sergey jealous there's this like half-ass very brief immediately thrown out the window fox is like let me help you make sergey jealous right it's so half-ass they're like like it's just letting letting him think they're sleeping together i'm just like you definitely happens like (laughs) Yeah, I never used it's to understand. It's just an excuse to make out. <laughs> I never, yeah, I never used to understand why books would like introduce stuff like that just to like never bring it up again. And then it just yeah. happens so many times that I like totally let it go. <laughs> like whatever, Chekhov's gun, who? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you know. Chekhov's kiss, Chekhov's yeah. ruse. Chekhov's scheme, know. ruse, yeah. <laughs> Sergei's They're just ruse. not scheming enough. They're not mm-hmm. scheming enough. Mm-hmm. Well, because like no yeah. one really believes it is the thing. That they're having Hannah. sex. No, no, no. That they actually care about me. He's so oh. jealous. Yeah. Like Hannah doesn't. Hannah doesn't believe. I'm. I'm saying neither of them, and we we get their POVs. Hannah obviously doesn't care. Yeah. Or doesn't believe. Well, doesn't believe it. But Fox does care about the kiss because he's like, "Wow, that kiss was so passionate." Shit. Are these? What is this feeling? So sudden and new. new. And he's like, "I have to scare Hannah off." And so the next day. He uses, he constantly is like, I'm going to show her how much of a slut, how sexual I am. And that will scare her off, obviously. And so the next morning he like walks, he comes out of his room in his underwear, smelling like orange massage oil that he just used to masturbate. And like, in what universe does that make someone like not be attracted to you? Oh, or I mean, if it, assuming they're already attracted to you, if you just like well, but someone. he thinks she is because he's trying to scare right, her off. Right, right, right. It doesn't. No, exactly. That's part of the silliness of like the whole his whole like struggle. Tm, like that's part of like the ridiculousness of that. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, like the way that they made the massage oil bring that topic up seems seemed a little convoluted to me, and like just did not seem natural. But I was just like, "What are you doing?" But but they're both like, "Okay, we just gotta fuck once to like get it out of our system." Like they're both having this, mood. and then Fox is like, "I'm gonna take it a step further. I'm gonna try to seduce her. Like we're gonna have sex once. I'm gonna show her that's all I'm good for." Mm-hmm. And sh- Hannah's like, "No, <laughs> sir." Mm-hmm. To know for me, thank you so much. It's a no for me. But it is a very hot scene when Hannah, like, masturbates and Fox is like, let me fuck you. And she's like, no. Mm. But, like, you know, in, like, a hot way. Kind of. But she doesn't come. Well, yeah, she doesn't come. That was one thing that I really liked. Hannah, besides music TM, um, Hannah's other main personality trait is that her greatest turnoff is when Fox like is shaming himself and is like talking down on himself because mm. like she's about to come through oh, she's all hot and bothered she's masturbating with him over her and then he's like yeah let me take you on the bed that's all I'm good for and she's like absolutely not mm. <laughs> we're done mm-hmm. not today libido crushed mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah she's holding the party line but Fox does he does realize that that scheme of like scaring her away by being sexual was silly so he um is like you know try, tries to apologize he like he makes some potato leek soup Rachel. Mm, i know i do love potato leek soup and i love that it keeps coming up in these books right wasn't it in the yes. first book too they like go to I the grocery know. store yeah isn't that the book where they go to the grocery store and he like makes her get random ingredients they play the game where they're getting like random ingredients and i was immediately knew like, oh. Man, i really want some like potato leek soup oh maybe 
Okay. So do we think my question for this, the reason I bring this up, which by the way, I didn't notice this until I reread it like recently, like till I did my second read this time at like three Mm -hmm. times speed, Mm -hmm. um, which I can't believe that I didn't note this until this time. Um, Do you think that he is using the pioneer woman's recipe? I hope so. Okay. Because like, why not? It would be kind of hard to screw up potato leaves as long as you have like potato leeks and cream. Or I mean, cauliflower, honestly, sometimes it's even creamier than potato. I don't really understand how. Somehow. But... I really yeah, like right? cauliflower you... rice. And it's actually very easy to make. You do like cauliflower rice? Yeah, it's actually very easy to make, too. No. Why would you make it? Like, what caused you to make it? I was trying to spice up my my meal planning back when I worked in an office. Oh, this is like a long time ago. Yes. Do you think that Fox gets into the Pioneer Woman? Because what I'm imagining is that when they move in together and Fox finally has to decorate his apartment because it's canon that he doesn't like. Why wouldn't Hannah decorate also? Yeah. Because Hannah doesn't, like, neither of them seem like particularly like decorating okay. people. Yeah. yeah. I just like had this vision of Fox walking into the local Walmart and like walking past and like the Pioneer Woman collection catches his eye. And he's like, what's this? And suddenly, like, their whole house is so accessorized exactly, like, what with happened the Pioneer to me. Woman. <laughs> yes. That's exactly what happened to me. I fucking love the Pioneer Woman, man. I mean, you can speak to the hypnotic thrall of the Pioneer Woman. Yeah. I mean, that first cup I saw. So we were shopping for stuff for Evie with me and mom. I really wanted it. Anyway. Oh, my God. I can't believe. Okay. If you ever buy, like, I mean, this probably holds true for any store. But, like, specifically, this happened from, like, plates and bowls from Target. We had like a bunch of like just i don't know like plasticky bowls like from walmart and target mm-hmm. and one of them started we like heated food up with the microwave and it started like flaking and i literally ate some of it i'm like worried i'm gonna get cancer like bowl before i noticed it, like shit started flaking off of it and i looked at the bottom and it did it said don't microwave but like what? that's so fucking bold because yeah like i should have checked but like i'm it's i'm sure it came from like the same shelf as like all the other like why would you ever want non-microwavable cheap bowl like you know what i mean it wasn't like yeah, nice like plastic bowl right like it wasn't like nice it wasn't like something you'd like you know you'd be willing to sacrifice not that i'm really ever this type of person but like in theory i could see someone wanting to sacrifice convenience for like having nice stuff for guests sometimes you know <laughs> like I in guess. theory right I, I i couldn't be me because again i can just buy the pioneer woman which is always microwavable <laughs> but like and dishwasher safe exactly <laughs> But yeah, this shit was like it, I think it was dishwasher, dishwasher safe, but it was it's a don't microwave. Like why? It's like clearly like what other purpose could you possibly have for shit like that besides like reheating leftover food? You know, <laughs> like why? Anyway, that's just like my little spiel. Check everything. Trust nothing. Trust nothing. Don't mm-hmm. believe except mm-hmm. the pioneer woman. You can trust her with your life. <laughs> yeah, I still check her stuff because I'm sure she has some stuff. It's probably more obvious though. Yeah. It's probably like the things you wouldn't you would expect to not. Yeah. She makes a good griddle. Double griddle. She makes a what? You know, like one of those big like cooking pans that you can put and like cook with over multiple burners at once. Oh uh, yeah. one of those. Yeah. Well. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm happy for you. Yeah. Yeah. I was just like, was Fox invited to the party? Like how did he show up? <laughs> We're still how did he get to the party? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the best thing at this party. Mm. I wouldn't marry me either. <laughs> That's Fox. Yeah. He only also only has one lamp in his apartment. I wrote that down. I guess that goes with the no decorating, but like what? I thought maybe he has an overhead light, Rachel. Maybe. But like I, I thought don't know you why were I gonna say down. he only has one limb. <laughs> it's mm. like in his apartment. I was like, what one, happened? Like, like, what happened on the sea? <laughs> the ocean sea that he only has one limb. Did the king, did like the giant snow crabs that ate mm-hmm. Amelia Earhart come from? The fuck, yeah. The that coconut would be, crabs, that would be, that's what it was. Right, that would be poetic justice. They would avenge their northern brothers. <laughs> By eating their arms. Yeah. Well, they did get a nice treat yeah. out of Henry Cross, I'll tell them. you that much. Mm. Mm. Sad. Dark. Yeah. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> um but um, speaking of things in in fox's apartment um hannah finds his record collection yeah she's like oh my god player. she's like but he's wow. been like hiding from her because he didn't want her to know how into him she he was how into her he was yeah 
Yeah. He, like, and he's like, I can't year. spook him like a skittish horse. So I'm not going to like push <laughs> why he got this, why he like got this and didn't tell me. <laughs> and I'm like, this, this is the kind of shit that I eat up in romance mm. book in romance novels really? of like the heroine being like oh like i can see through him you know i can see through him but, but like, like i'm i'm gonna like wait cool. you know what i mean like because he's a baby i'll be patient like be patient but like in real life absolutely not mm. <laughs> don't wait don't be patient with a man mm. <laughs> stop giving men the benefit of the doubt and start <laughs> doubting men <laughs> is what i have to say but I love Fox. I do love Fox. And I also love Fox's mom, who's a traveling bingo caller, which honestly really might is. be my calling. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand. Yeah. Like, I'm really confused how far and widely she travels and like how because he's like, yeah, she can never give me like that much warning when she's going to be in town because she gets sent to like different places. But then she has that like whole story. She seems to like really know all the like people. And so why would it be unpredictable if they have like regular bingo nights and she's always their caller, you know? Well, maybe it's only like once a week, and so she, like she like travels around, like that then, area. Sure, but wouldn't it still be very predictable when she's going to be in town and yeah, she can see Fox? You're right. Like every Thursday. Maybe these people follow her. Maybe to participate in bingo tournaments. Maybe, yeah, because she has a she whole has story. a loyal like fan following. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> it's all coming together. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> He, like, takes Hannah with him to me, and then he has to, like, break up the, the fight between the old ladies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's why he goes. His mom, like, uses him as, He's like, a, a bouncer, bouncer. <laughs> between the old ladies. <laughs> but the way home feels the drive home. It, like, it starts raining. Like, it's, I don't know. This whole drive home was so twilight-coded I thought I knew you were going to say that. But, but like, wasn't but- it? Like Angeles. they're in this car, they're driving home back to their Pacific Northwest small town. Like they're having a serious conversation. TM, the man <laughs> is saying that he's bad for her. She shouldn't be with him. Like <laughs> the woman is like drawing out his secrets and like saying she doesn't care. <laughs> and then the and then she also has a moment when they get back. When she's like, oh, my God, we were going so fast. We got back so quickly, like faster yeah, than I expected. Which I always like, hate. It's... I always hate that part of it. It's like such a letdown. You know, like when you're not ready to get out of the car yet. <laughs> it's so Twilight. Yeah. All that's missing is mushroom ravioli. Fox, that's what you should cook. That's another example of like just like weird pacing choices that didn't need to happen like in Twilight. Like, I don't know. I mean, everything about Twilight is like a weird pacing choice. But like, why make the conversation like shorter than it could be than it needs to be, you know, or like, you know, Mm -hmm. or the time to have the conversation when it's already really short? Like, why? It wouldn't make it like, you know, she could still have it be that like Edward normally drives too fast. But like this time he drove too slow because he wanted to have more time in the car. Mm -hmm. You know, but he did drive slow, Rachel. He was driving 80. He said, (laughs) I hate driving slow. (laughs) a phrase on twilight stickers the world over in 2010 (laughs) i hate driving slow i hate driving slow with like a speedometer at 80 (laughs) and like a shiny silver volvo classic 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 move so he is making strides in her work thing i don't really care about that i don't know i don't really care she's using her papa's she shanties See shant- Making she so shanties show shanties. She shanties. <laughs> yeah. She like asked Sopal. She like has like a stand down with Brinley or whatever. Sergey, like the making Sergey jealous plan is working to the point where Sergey like asks her out basically. Yeah. Which, like, he is her boss. And he's he's like chill about it. He's not like Yeah. Whatever. But like I just feel like that still is like He also like does it in the same breath of as being like like mm-hmm. I would have kept you as my production assistant because <laughs> you were so like right. useful. Like he does, he does one of those boss things. Like I feel like the hating game does that too, where the boss is like, "Yeah, I just <laughs> I didn't promote you because <laughs> you're, you're just, too useful. Yeah, it's too just easy really to exploit bold. you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't be good at your job and a pleasure to work with. Yeah. Um. But he takes her, Fox takes her. I don't forget whether this is the same bingo thing. I don't know. He takes her to this, like, installation, which I guess is a real thing. 
um this like music art installation yeah, where like so the wind that was really plays silly. music I or whatever i can't believe that anyone would actually want it yeah and they're like there and they like fuck in the car and fox is doing Almost, like a, a, like a tight no they oh that's, that's the time they do okay they do like a titanic hand thing against the window where he like you know like the foggy mm-hmm. window like and i'm just imagining like i i would assume that this would be like a family friendly our installation well, that's the thing is it's just those type of things that no one actually goes to which is why i found it so unrealistic that they but like, just like imagine being way to go there. a tired mom you're just trying to get your kids out of the house you're trying to like entertain you wouldn't them. be going there at sunset no one goes to those things no I'm, I'm sorry i get it i don't know what you're going for but it's not this that's the thing is no one actually goes to shit like this are you kidding me i feel like this is the exact thing that like when you're trying to plan like an activity not for your children it's, it's like it was like dinner time was sunset it? that's yeah and i didn't realize yeah. until i didn't realize until they were talking about the sun going down that it was like daylight the whole time what did i write about it let me see oh yeah like i didn't even realize they were outside the whole car the whole <laughs> time until they like went in the car and then it was daylight because they're talking yeah they start talking about the sunset oh, okay yeah they go in the car but once and then yeah fox says his titanic hand thing but then they also like they're on the back seat and then like there's this description of like Fox like turns turns them so that they're like facing each other laying on their sides. And I'm like, how fucking wide is this backseat? <laughs> like Yeah, I have no idea what kind of is car. That they not drive. absurdly wide. How yeah, how do they yeah, I don't know what the fuck kind of car we're supposed to think he drives. But yeah, they're finally together, but like, you know, obviously Fox is self conscious about being a womanizer. And so like they break up. But Hannah does the very, like, it's the very, like, Joel Alwyn, Taylor Swift thing where, like, he tries to break up with her, in which Hannah is Joel Alwyn. Like, Fox tries to break up with her, and Hannah's like, mm, yeah, okay, no, <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> and she just leaves. She's like, okay. Anyway, mm-hmm. potato leek soup again for dinner. <laughs> it's great leftover. It is. It is delicious. But yeah, Fox overcomes his mommy slash daddy issues. His mom apologizes, which unlike Piper and Hannah's mom, mm-hmm. who needs to apologize. I'm still bitter about that. Sometimes I just think about how her mom's the worst. And then they're together. He's like worried he's going to have to chase after her. But she's just like sitting in the apartment I'm like, OK, anyway. The epilogue with the friend and moose attack is just out of like Hannah's pulling up to their like house in the suburbs. <laughs> she sees their children oh, in the window i have a question like <laughs> i feel like we knew that they said it at some point in the first book but like exactly how far from seattle is westport because they know. end up living because like, yeah, the original plan is like yeah they're gonna like move somewhere in between so they both yeah. don't have to commute that far i don't know i'm sorry i just feel like yeah it should be hannah's commute that gets prioritized because like fox's commute is to like drive to a boat and go on it for five days yeah, and I feel like that's really different than like every yeah. day, you know. Well, Hannah becomes like a music broker. She's like an agent, so like she mm-hmm. doesn't. She also doesn't have like. I think she mostly works from home too. She only like goes. Out. Yeah, no, no, I know. Like in reality, it like turns out like that. I'm just thinking like when they're thinking about what to yeah. do. I don't know how far away Westport is from Seattle because I feel like sometimes I feel like in this book you get the sense that it's like maybe like an hour and a half away. Max, yeah. But then like in the first book, they have to like they go to Seattle and then they have to stay overnight. Right. And like in this one, they go like they go at one point because Hannah is getting the band to record the song and whatever. Yeah. And it's like a day trip. Which, like, yeah. it was so exhausting. He was like, well, I don't have to leave until 8 a.m. on, like, the next day. So let's do, like, a whole trip to Seattle. That's insane. Our day best. before. Yeah, I know. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have no idea. Yeah, then we get the moose epilogue. Moose epilogue. <laughs> Just out of left field. <laughs> She's like, moose aren't especially dangerous animals. I'm like, no, your instinct was right. They are, actually. I guess more when you're, like, running to them when you're driving. She's like, maybe he's yeah. at least 13, maybe 29 feet tall. <laughs> Random moose. Random it's very, you know what it, when did this book come, this book came out recently. When did season one of The Crown come out? I have no idea. 
2012. 2016. Oh, really? Oh, that was so long ago. No, I'm just thinking because there's a scene in season one of The Crown where uh, the then Princess Elizabeth and Prince Philip are like in on safari or whatever like they're in africa and like Mm -hmm. a big bull elephant like pops out of the bush Mm -hmm. and prince philip like distracts it so that like elizabeth can like go into the tree house they're staying in and that Mm. felt very much like this moose epilogue in Mm. which like the moose is the elephant (laughs) that's like the second time this week that being like trampled by an elephant has come up for me what (laughs) that's tragic i know (laughs) Yeah, I don't like that it keeps coming up. <laughs> the elephant? Yeah, it feels it feels like a prophetic a sign, yeah. Well, it's like in this book. Fox has a dream that like Hannah's lost and then she like, you know, gets a, a flat tire on the way home from the seance mm-hmm. that she doesn't know where she is. <laughs> so is an elephant coming for you? <laughs> God, stop. That's not the same as a dream. Why was she at a seance? For fun. For shits and giggles. You know, sometimes your friends just invite you to a casual seance. Yeah. True. So true. Yeah. Happens all the time. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Catskill. I don't know. I feel like pretty low. No one had any pets except for the dogs at the end, right? Oh, yeah. They do have dogs in the end. What would we say? What would we say a moose is? Mm, I don't know. It's not giving cat like it is an animal, which we've like previously decided counts. But only sometimes, like bears are cat like. Oh, yeah, they are because have you ever seen a bear in night vision goggles? Or have you seen? Yeah, yeah. Either or. All right. I would say like a. You want to do a three, two, one? Yeah. All right, three, three two, two, one, one three, four. Okay, 3.5. I guess we could have added points for it being in the Pacific Northwest, which is Twilight, which is cats. There were several Twilight vibe scenes. They never go hiking or anything in these books, I realize. Well, Piper like just started wearing jeans. Part of Piper's character development is like with buying jeans. So. <laughs> Hannah, I feel like would absolutely be one of those people that like is blasting their music out of their speaker on the hiking trail. Do you think so? No, because she likes headphones. Yeah. She'd have to like giant noise canceling headphones and then be like, why is my head sweating oh, so much? <laughs> I don't understand how people can walk with noise canceling headphones. Yeah. This, the sound is too no, it's not like I can hear my footsteps in yeah, my ears. Yeah. No, it's just like loud. It's just like an un, an uninvited base, like and base disorienting. Thing. I okay. I if you feel that way, I don't. But <laughs> okay. your experience is valid. Thank you. Anyway, right. are we going. So we're going with three point five. Mm-hmm. Okay, Allison, where can they find us? You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at We Read It One Night on. Twitter at We Read It Podcast. You can email us. We Read It One Night at gmail dot com. And you can leave us a rating and review wherever you're listening. And also check out our Etsy shop called Evelyn and Adelaide. (laughs) All right. Godspeed, comrades. Godspeed.